This is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and this is your 1591. Uh, and this is the final test uh, before we pack her up to ship her out to you. Uh, and we're going to go over the basic operation of the machine, uh, just to, uh, uh, in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, we'll show you how to work the various controls and uh, just let you let you see and hear her run um let's see let's turn the light off to get the glare off the bed uh and we'll start by winding a bobbin your bobbin case is down here below the slide plate and there's a little lever on the side that if you pull it out it releases it oops make sure the needle's up out of the needle hole it releases it from the uh, pin of the hook where it rides. Um, uh, this little lever here, as long as you're holding that lever, it's going to hold your bobbin in the bobbin case so it doesn't fall out. And uh, if you like pull that lever, then you can just drop your case in hand. And uh, I'll just pull this old thread off. Okay, your, uh, your bobbin winder is up here, and uh, it rides on the hand wheel. The hand wheel is what spins it to wind the bobbin. Um, and there's a spool pin down here just for your bobbin winder. So put your spool on the bobbin winder spool pin. Go through the little tensioner device on the bed and up to the bobbin. Before you put the bobbin on, it's easier to get the thread started. So a little hole in the side of your bobbin. You just want to put your thread through that little hole and hold on to the tail here while you give it a few wraps just to hold the thread on the bobbin while it's winding. And when you put it on, your thread's going to go over the top of the bobbin. Push it onto the spindle of the bobbin winder. Turn the rubber tire until the little keeper pin goes into the slot on the side of the bobbin. Then press your bobbin winder up against the hand wheel. And this little finger here drops down into the bobbin uh, and uh, as the bobbin fills, it lifts this little uh, finger higher and higher and higher until when the bobbin is full, it clicks off. So you're not going to have a big tangle of thread. Hi, Ollivander. Come on in. Kitty's here for a visit. Um, okay. In the center of your hand wheel, there's a chrome knob which is your clutch knob turn that knob towards you about a quarter turn you'll feel it hit its stop uh, then the uh, wheel can spin without cycling the machine uh, step on the gas lightly no reason to hurry the faster you go the more chances there are of causing a tangle <laughs> Not the end of the world. Yeah, back on good as new. Of course you can go fast if you want to. That's about all we need for our test. Click that little finger up, the bobbin winder pops loose. Retighten the clutch knob and just snug. You don't have to make it real tight. That just makes it hard to get loose the next time. And then your bobbin uh, on a singer, 
We want the thread to come off the bobbin in this direction. It's important uh, when you put it in that it goes in in this direction. If you put it in the other way, uh, you're going to have trouble. So put the bobbin in the bobbin case, go into the little slanted slot in the side, and up under the leaf spring here until you feel it click into place. Then when you pull on this thread, you'll feel a little bit of tension on it. Pull the lever, and now your bobbin doesn't fall out, and your bobbin case slides right on that little pin down there in the center of the hook. And we'll just leave that open and leave the end of the thread free <coughs> so it's not pinched when I'm ready to pull it up through the needle hole. Uh, to thread the machine, put your spool of thread on the spool pin. Go through the first thread guide here at the top, towards the back of the machine, and straight into the tension discs between the two uh, convex discs of the tensioner. Uh, go all the way around until you go into the slot at the top here. It's kind of a notch here at the top, you'll see it. It's, a, it's chrome where the rest of the dial is black. And then from that notch, Go down and catch your check spring, which is this little thin spring on the side of your tension assembly. From there, you're going to go through your take-up lever from the back towards the front. Then when you pull on your thread, you'll see the check spring move. From there you go down to the thread guide on the face plate. And straight down from there to the thread guide on the needle clamp. And contrary to most machines, uh, even most singers, uh, this machine threads through the needle from the inside towards the out, from the right towards the left. Now before we do that, we're going to cut a nice clean end on the thread. That way the little frayed ends aren't deflecting the needle from the hole. sure your thread doesn't get wrapped around the needle or around anything else. And now, with the needle threaded, hold the uh, upper thread loosely while you turn the hand wheel towards you one full turn. And the needle is going to take the thread down. It's going to pick it up from the needle, wrap it around the bobbin, and it's going to bring up your lower thread through the needle hole. So remember, you're turning towards you. One full revolution. When it gets to the top again, up comes your bottom thread. Put both threads between the toes of the presser foot. The top thread goes between, the bottom one goes under and towards the back of the machine, and you are ready to sew. We're going to sew some denim. So put it under the presser foot. And using the lever on the back of the machine, lower the presser foot onto the fabric. Hold your threads for the first stitch or two while it locks in place. Oh. It's not in a case yet, so the uh, um, the works are contacting the table. Okay, as you can see, uh, I've put it in a base. Uh, this machine really needs to be in a base uh, or in a cabinet, um, and not just directly on a tabletop. So. Um, 
we're going to start over here. So uh, this is your stitch length adjuster, and um, from the center position, where the fabric doesn't move at all, going down uh, in increments, each stitch gets longer and longer and longer, or the stitch gets longer and longer. Uh, so it'll be uniform size at whatever setting you set it at. But down from zero is longer stitches. Up from zero uh, is the same thing. The stitches get longer and longer and longer, except in reverse. So we're going to go down in the forward position, and we're going to set it oh, at about 20 stitches per inch. And pulling our threads for the first stitch or two. Leave your needle in the fabric to act as a pivot. You raise your presser foot and turn it. Now we're going to uh, go down a little bit more and make a little longer stitch. In reverse. I think I'm going to get use a different spool of thread. This spool is so lightweight, it's bouncing up, and the uh, thread gets wrapped around the spool pin below the spool, and uh, adds way too much tension. So let's just pull that upper thread out. Styrofoam spool. Too bouncy, in my opinion. Let's go with a nice sunny yellow. Same thing, spool on the spool pin through the upper thread guide between the two convex discs around and into the little notch at the top. Down, pick up your check spring through the take-up lever from back to front. <laughs> I didn't cut a fresh end. This, you might not be able to see it, is all frayed. And those little frayed ends deflect the thread from going through holes of various sizes and uh, getting through the needle is going to be ridiculous. So, cut a nice clean end on it. Anyway, from the take-up lever into the thread guide on the bottom of the face plate, into the thread guide on the needle bar, and through the needle bar, in this case, from right to left. Most machines either thread from front to back or from left to right. But this one, and the featherweight, and not sure about the 201. But there's a, there are a few of the um, early mid-century, uh, early and mid-century singers that uh, thread that direction. There we go. Holding the thread. Reverse. 
Forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward short stitches, forward long stitches. That's basically the stitch length. Oh, one other thing. If you want your forward and reverse stitches to be exactly the same length, you can use this thumb screw over here and bring it up until it contacts the uh, uh, the stitch length lever at whatever your uh, forward setting is going to be. And now when you go in for reverse, your reverse stitches are going to be the same length as your forward stitches. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to leave this wide open all the way at the bottom. That way you have the full range of motion on your stitch length lever. Uh, let's see. It's a straight stitch machine, so there's no stitch width. Uh, so your tension. Uh, this is your upper tension. And um, usually uh, you want to be somewhere between two and three on your dial. Uh, that's a good... Uh, um, good tension for regular fabric um, if you're sewing something really heavy you may want to add a little more stitch length by turning it up uh, it's numbered from one to nine actually from zero to nine but we're going to go ahead and keep it about two and a half or so um, if you're going to sew something lighter you can let off a little bit this one something really delicate and uh, it's puckering the fabric because the threads pulling up too hard uh, you can let off a little bit on the uh, upper tension and uh, and your uh, stitch should lay a little flatter uh, your lights back here uh, you're gonna want to oil this machine um, uh, using only sewing machine oil uh, and uh, if you sew all day every day you want to oil in your machine every day like just one drop in each oil hole uh, and it, look in your manual, manual it'll tell you uh, all of the oiling points uh, all of the oil holes and uh, you'll want to take off your face plate your back inspection plate and um, take off your uh, needle plate here which is the half moon shaped one <coughs> it has two screws you want to take that off and brush out any dust and lint that's collected around the uh, feed dogs which are the little teeth that move the fabric uh, oil everything uh, turn it on its back and oil the bottom. Uh, every every movement point where two things rotate on each other or slide on each other or otherwise make contact and move against each other, you want a little film of oil there to uh, for the parts to ride on so they don't wear on each other. Uh, if you sew maybe a couple hours a week, uh, every uh, two to three weeks you should oil your machine um, if you bring it out of the closet you know once every six months to sew a pair of uh, jeans or something and it hasn't been oiled in three months uh, give it a uh, an oiling before you start because the uh, oil does evaporate on the back here are two grease tubes and once a year, you're going to want to take, unscrew these caps here on the bottom and get some motor uh, lubricant, uh, sewing machine motor lubricant. Uh, talk to your, uh, your uh, local sewing shop. Tell them you have an old singer that you need to oil the grease, to, or grease the grease tubes. And you just squirt... Uh, half a teaspoon or so in there and then you put the cap back on and that pushes the grease up against the uh, well up against the uh, grease wick that's in there which 
carries the grease to the uh, shaft of the motor. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, clean it, oil it. Um, don't leave it in the sun. Don't leave it in the damp. Oh, and always unplug. You're not, when you're not using your machine, always unplug uh, on a vintage machine. Because these old uh, old style uh, foot controls are rheostats. And they, uh, they slow the motor speed by taking some of the power uh, that's going into the motor and routing it through a big resistor in the foot control. Um, so the slower you're sewing, the more power is going through the foot control and the hotter it's going to get. So if you uh, were to leave your leave your machine plugged in and somehow something got pressed up against the uh, button of the presser foot or even if the button someday were to get stick, stuck for some reason uh, it could build up enough heat in there to actually cause a fire. So always unplug your machine when you're not using it. Uh, if you've come here from somewhere else on the internet and found this video, uh, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. Uh, we're on Stagecoach Road out here in the Coast Range of Oregon. Uh, therefore, we are StagecoachRoadSewing.com. And uh, if you come by the website, you'll see hundreds of beautiful, beautiful machines that we've restored over the decades. Uh, uh, just about all of them have already gone out to, out to happy homes all over the country. But uh, you can see pictures of them from all different angles and a little bit of information about each one. And um, at the top of the page, there will be a few, uh, maybe 10, maybe 20 uh, restored machines that are still available for sale. And uh, you can bring one home to your sewing room. So uh, check us out, stagecoachroadsewing.com. Um, this is your feed drop here. Loosen this thumb, thumb screw all the way. And now your feed is independent from the uh, cycling of the machine and it will drop. To uh, re-engage your feed, just screw that back in all the way.